some research on you, of course, um, and a couple questions. I love your Russian heritage. So before you moved to New York, so did, were you actually have any time spent in Russia? So I have a kind of, quite, kind of a compl complicated sort of beginning in terms of my travels as a kid. Okay. Uh, my parents are Russian, and they uh, left the Soviet Union um, when my mother was eight months pregnant, and I was born in Austria, in Vienna. Oh, wow. Okay. And then we moved to Paris when I was very young, uh, not even a year, and we spent the first eight years in France. So I grew up in Paris, right. and then we moved to New York uh, after that. So... I'm Russian, mm -hmm. first generation, born in Austria, <laughs> raised in France, and New York. So you have a lot of worldwide experience. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Did a lot of that influence you going into fashion? Like, I know you're, you're, you had lineage in your family of people doing stuff with fashion, but living in the different places, did that affect you as well? Of course. I mean, mm -hmm. I think everything affects you, especially at that age. But, you know, watching my father work, who's also a designer, my whole life influenced everything that I do. I mean, it's something that has been... Um, part of my whole um, existence. I, ever since I can remember, I was around clothes and dresses and fabrics. So um, that really is at the core of who I am and how I kind of um, design. Well, I know a lot of people are familiar with the term fashion designer, um, but I saw that you list yourself as a third generation couturier. Yeah. What is, can, is there a difference or can you elaborate more on that of terminology? Course there is. From, so, okay. a couturier is somebody who really understands couture is actually a French term and it's bespoke, it's finely made. Haute couture is the highest of all of the, um, of the fashion educations and the practices. And, um, you have to go through all these processes to get admitted into the syndicat de couture in France and all these sort of things. But ultimately, I have been raised in the fine art of clothes making mm -hmm. as well as design. So couture really is about the needle and the hand and what the actual garment is and how it's made and the whole um, culture around how everything is uh, created. So that's really why it's a couturier rather than a designer. Well, yeah, that, and I, I think that's really important to make that distinction because, yeah. you know, we throw out the term designer a lot for There's a lot and of like an umbrella, like that yeah. umbrella, and I'm like, no, this is special, this is different, so, yeah. and I don't think a lot of my readers um, know the difference, so I wanted to definitely yeah. pull that out. Um, so then, is this your first time in Houston, or have you no, been in Texas before? No, I've been to Houston many times. Uh, we participated in Houston Fashion Week, I think, twice or three times, I don't even remember. Um, so, I come here quite a bit. Um, Neiman's is an amazing partner, and we um, we do a lot of business here. We have a lot of clients that are in Houston, from Houston, and it's, it's a great city to come and visit. Well, that's great. I know. I'm sure your clients love to meet. I know they love to meet all the designers that come in person. It's just something extra special versus just wearing the clothes. You get to see the person behind them. Yeah, and there's so a relationship like, then to exactly. what you're wearing and how, how, how the clothes are created and made and who's behind them. It's, it's really important. So this is your second day for your trunk show. Yes. So how has it been going so far? Have you been meeting Fantastic. a lot of your clients? Yeah, Great. yeah. Tonight we have the um, the fashion show and yeah. the, the dinner, so it's 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 going well. It's great. It's amazing. Well, how did you get aligned with the recipe for success event that you're doing tonight? Well, really through the events. Um, they're huge supporters of, of both me and the organization, and they asked me to participate, and I absolutely said yes. We're really excited to be a part of Recipe for Success. Well, I've been supporting that organization for a while. You should come to all of the events, and I love that they bring in you guys, and it's just amazing to get to meet you and, and chat with you about that. Um, your garments are very, like, strong and powerful and very, like, unique. Like, the girl who wears them has to be bold and, like, confident. And you've dressed one of my favorite celebrities of all time, Beyonce. She's, like, the ultimate, I'm the ultimate fangirl of her. So... Other than like being strong, what what do you see as your client, your ideal client for your clothing? Um, strength really is a big part of it. It's <laughs> somebody who, um, it's it defies age, body types, backgrounds, cultures, um, ethnicities. It's really, I have clients in, in in Singapore and Japan. I have clients in Russia. I have clients in Brazil. I've got clients. I mean, I, all over the world, right? And so. What the thread is between the pun intended between all of these, um, all of these individuals and all these women is more about their inherent desire to look special and to feel beautiful and to be modern rather than expected. There is um, 
it has a long, strong aftertaste of couture in the clothes because of my upbringing, because of my history with Oscar and Belle Blast, because of all the things that I've been brought up participating and watching and seeing. But it's really about making that uh, elemental aspect into something that is modern and that makes somebody stand out. So it's not for the faint of heart. No. And I like things that stand out. I've always been one to like pieces that are pizzazz or someone's going to look twice or maybe three times. Like, what, she, what does she have on? So I love that. Um, so, yes, you worked at Oscar de la Rita for a while. And then you did the Bill Blast. When did you know that you were ready to go out on your own? There was one moment that happened at the last job that I had where it was just time. I just knew it. It was like the end of that part of my life and the mm -hmm. beginning of the next. That was right. Okay. Well, we're glad that you did. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> we enjoy everything that you've been bringing to the industry. Thank you. Thank you. What kind of advice would you give to a young fashion designer or a budding couturier? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's, a lot it's, it's, it's a very, very challenging and difficult industry. Um, it's unforgiving. It's um, very, very um, weathering. It's hard, um, but if somebody is really impassioned about it, like truly impassioned about it, not like, oh, I'm going to like, you know, be a designer like yeah. we were just talking about, but if it's a real passion, a real belief, then you have to put in an inordinate amount of hours and time and energy and thought and um, dedication to make something and to develop something. Um, it takes a long time, and it takes a lot of money, and it takes a lot of energy, and it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of things. The most important thing is that in my field, there's an endless barrage of opinions. Okay. Everybody's got one, and everybody tells you what it is. Right. So your work is constantly being criticized. You're constantly on display to be judged. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important things is that you listen, but you don't bend, unless you agree. Right. Mm -hmm. um, to maintain your own sense of self is the most important thing to do as a designer, while being able to identify who and what you're, and what for are the clothes that you're making. So really stick to your guns, don't give up and um, listen, but don't always uh, do. Don't get lost, doesn't it? Yeah, and the noise. Yep. Well, I think a lot of people see the glamour of it all. They, you know, dressing the celebrities, the red carpet, you, you know. That's the end. It's, and That's it takes so much more behind it, and it takes so long. And, you know, I have a lot of friends here who are studying to be fashion designers, and I try to support them. You know, they've gone to the Art Institute, or they're coming in from L.A., and, they, you know, they realize how hard it is, and then, you know, uh, they might may not always continue going with it because they just realize it's just it's a lot tougher than people think um, with that. So, and I also am always amazed at how many collections designers do nowadays. It is I don't Endless. no I mean, idea how like, you guys keep up with really it. Difficult. It's really difficult. I can't really imagine hard. how many do you do? I do four. I did. I was doing five and I stopped. I was also doing a bio collection and it was like too much. It's too much. Well, between like the four year. How do you find inspiration for all these? This was actually something that uh, has been a big sort of uh, debate in my head and in my office. Um, you can't. You can't really have a fully developed concept that you show for, for four of them each year. Mm -hmm. You just, you can't. If you, at least I can't. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I ever have enough time and enough um manpower and enough material to, or, or, you know, collections have to be concise and edited. You can't say everything. Right. So if it's a concept that I really believe in, I now spread it between two seasons. So I have two, okay. two sister concepts a year. I mean, four sister concepts, two main, main, main ideas that I do. And that way I have two seasons to really develop mm -hmm. each one rather than trying to come up with you know, things that are half-baked. And it's probably why you're really successful, because then, even if you edited something out of the first half of your sister collection, and you really loved it, but it just didn't work that moment, you could bring exactly. it back, and you always and you get to focus in more. Um, you get yeah. to really, you know, dig into an idea and really 
articulate it. Well, my next question was going to be a, a tie into that one. Are you already thinking right now about your next collection? I have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, you never I, stop. I, I, right before I left, I was finishing my all my fabrics uh, for Resort 17. And uh, we're working on Spring 17 now, too. So it's like... Well, how much of your time is dedicated to design and being creative and versus the business aspect of it? The least amount of time is dedicated to design, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, being an entrepreneur and being a business owner, it's as the business is developing, I, I'm actually carving out more and more time for my work and for my, uh, you know, ability to, for my time for me to reflect and really design. Um, luckily, it comes very easily to me. But it's like when you're when you're starting out, when you're an emerging designer. I mean, it's tough. You don't have time to do anything. You're, you're hitting the pavement hard doing everything in order to make this thing something. Right. And I'm now at a point where luckily I can step away from all of that and really start focusing on the more you know, important stuff, which really is design. But right. it's always been disproportionately small comparatively to what I have to do for the business. I think that's another shock to a lot of designers as well, how much of it they have, to, how, how much business acclimate you have to have. There's so little design <laughs> and so much everything else. Exactly. It's crazy, yeah. How big is your team right now? We have 32 people working for us. And are you based in New York? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ever thought about any, I know New York is the hub for fashion, but I know a lot of designers are looking at other places now for I don't know, cheaper pricing on fabrics and stuff like that, or is this still going to be in New York? Okay. That's where I grew up. It's yeah. kind of the garment center of the yeah. country. It's where I belong. Come to Houston. <laughs> I'll come to Houston, but I won't move to right. Houston. Right, right. Yeah, it's the temperature. It's really hot down here. Um, I but. forgot. It's so cold in New York. I should have been looking like, at all these heavy clothes. <laughs> it's like, I forgot how hot it is here, but we're off to Paris tomorrow, so it's cold. Oh, we're back to being cold. Yeah. Um, so I know you work for Oscar. So how much of an influence was he himself? In your design, I know you were very inspired by your your father and everything, and the fashion that you grew up with. But well, working with Oscar Dorenta was one of those um, really important experiences because what it did was it gave me discipline. It taught me how much of a professional I needed to become and how little of one I was. <laughs> it really showed me restraint. He taught me how to do less. And because of that, it does more. Right. Editing, control, um, organization, methodology, like all of those things were really developed while I was there. Okay. So outside of him and your lineage, is there anybody else that was in the fashion industry that you looked up to as a mentor or that well, you Well, my, my boss from Oscar is still my mentor, Richard Lee, to this day. But, um, I really, you know, I, there's a lot of designers from history that I reference and that are big, you know, um, very important sort of um, pillars of my aesthetic beliefs. But in terms of actual experiences, it's really my dad and Oscar. Okay. Yeah. And I always like to end on this question. Um, since you have um, dressed some celebrities for, are there any celebrities that you haven't dressed yet that you would love to see one of your garments on? Yeah, there's two actually. Um, both of them were in the same movie this year. Um, Rooney Mara. Oh, she's fabulous. She's fabulous. Yeah. I love the way that she looks in Kate Blanchett. Perfect. Yeah, those are two. Like, Good choices. Yeah, yeah. Kate Blanchett's so regal. I love her yeah, demeanor. Yeah, she's like, amazing. Uh, I mean, anything she puts on, pretty much, she yeah. looks like <laughs> an untouchable. Fabulous. Yeah. Well, Ruben, thank you. I know you have a busy evening thank today. Thank you. It's so nice meeting you. Thank you for your time. Nice meeting you too. Thank you.